Okay, let me know if not able to see um, the screen. All right. All right, so what, what we covered previously, um, we are now looking at bar element or trough element. So it will be different from the spring, yeah? So bar or trough, we are deal with uh, elongation uh, and deal with the E, L, and A, yeah? There are three more uh, new parameter that we're looking at compared to the spring. So if you have a bar or steel bar or something, then we'll deal with area, we we'll deal with uh, uh, modulus yang or elasticity modulus <coughs> and the length. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so these three equation that we cover previously, <coughs> recall what you learned uh, in your static and dynamic or material class uh, on the stress, strain and um, how you convert stress into forces uh, through the area. So yesterday, uh, our previous class, we have a few assumption when we deal with bar element. Okay, so these four are important concept before we deal with the complex uh, equation later on. So uh, the first one, uh, we don't have shear force or bending moment, so meaning that we don't have Y component in our bar. Okay, as we go deeper, then we will consider the Y component. At this moment, we only deal with the X component, which is <clears throat> all the movement to the right will be positive. And then there will be no forces in Y direction. I mean, the small F, huh? the element forces are inside the element itself, act on the element itself, we don't have in Y direction. So since we don't have the Y direction force, we don't have moment uh, on the object itself. Then after that, we will, we will ignore the transverse displacement. Uh, and also, um, we will apply Hooke's law. And there will be no intermediate apply load later on. So, uh, uh, so um, in maybe in chapter 3 or chapter 4, then we will look at uh, intermediate apply loads. Uh, you will look at um, um, well-distributed load and non-well-distributed uh, load and so on. Okay, so uh, we will keep repeating the seven steps uh, throughout the module. So first one, we will look at element type. Uh, how do you initiate the first step is that you start labeling the element that you see in the problems. So you label uh, not one, not two or point one, point two, point three and point four and so on. Meaning you do the meshing, you break the structure into small pieces. Right, the fundamental one is that we have two point, point one and point two, and then you label the element accordingly. So if you have a point on your uh, answer or on your scratch, uh, on your diagram, meaning there will be a displacement and force. Okay, displacement in this case is u, y u because it's uh, acting on the uh, along the x axis. Okay, again, if you're if the question that you seen in test or exam. The axis reference axis given in y direction, then you have to change this one to v. If the direction changes to z, then we have to change to w. Okay, so just to this is how you define uh, your answer. Okay, then after that, you have the force on each end. Okay, second one, you recall the displacement function. Again, uh, we mentioned you have a linear, quadratic, and cubic form. You you can choose uh, either one, depend on the question given. Um, then after that, you recall the strain and stress equation. So the, the equation that we've seen previously is the strain. Strain is a changes of displacement divided by original displacement. And the stress is linked up with the modulus uh, elasticity or modulus yang times the strain. So this is how you link up the stress, strain, the displacement with the strain. Okay, so these are the three steps uh, in the exam that we expect you will start uh, practicing. Eh? So first, when you solve problem for uh, chapter, chapter 
sorry, chapter three, uh, this chapter. So you we are expecting you start labeling your object, uh, your element one, two, and then the displacement, so on. Then after that, you choose an equation to define what is the behavior of the bar. Okay. Then after that, you link these two equations together and put them in the matrix form. <clears throat> so yesterday, or a previous class, we did arrive at F equal to KD. Our form F equal to KD, uh, this form, on the left hand side for bar is f1x, f2x. The middle one, our k, today we look at bar. So you're having the a, e over l and positive, negative, negative, positive for your uh, k. And the displacement will be the same, u1 and u2. Okay. Let me check attendance. Okay, Brian's not here. All right, let's continue. Then you assembly like what you what we did in chapter two when we do with spring, we combine all the uh, the superimpose, we put all the element uh, stiffness matrix, we label them with their ticket number, and then we park them in the uh, parking complex like what we did uh, previously. Then after that, we solve for all the unknown uh, accordingly. So today we're going to practice one of the uh, uh, equation that we learned so far. So this this equation, uh, this these slides is available in your tutorial question. All right. So um, as you can see from the diagram itself, you are having three element. How you know that you are having a three element there is that uh, you look at the circle. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, and after that you are having point one, point two, point three, point four. You have four point. Meaning when you, in your answer, you're expecting, you're having a U1, U2, U3, U4. Again, why do we, uh, why can we use the U is because we are given the reference axis of X, okay? All right, then after that, we're given the length of each element. In this case, we're given a simple case where all the length is the same, all right? Uh, so for your coming test or exam, uh, the length will be different the point will be different, the forces will be different. Um, and then you have a bot arrow in the uh, at point number two, which is if you see a bot arrow, this is the external force. Okay, you have an external force of 3000 Newton. So external force, we always use the capital F to represent the external force. Okay, so this by looking at the diagram, you should able to understand what is the expected uh, parameter that you have. You can extract from the diagram itself. And you're having a constraint by uh, at point 0.1 and point 0.4. So point 0.1 mount to the wall, meaning point 0.1 cannot move. Point 0.4 mount to the wall, point 0.4 also cannot move. Okay. And Okay, then we solve uh, step by steps. So the, the tutorial question asks us to find a few things. First, asks us to combine all the Stevner metrics to become a global Stevner matrix. We need to find a capital K uh, value. Second, we need to find the displacement at point two, three, and uh, point two and three. Why we don't need to find point one and point four? Uh, Ashma, why we why we don't need to find the displacement for point one and point four in this case? Uh, because it fit at the the wall. Yeah, correct. Huh? So um, you have to be smart enough, huh? So you have to like uh, look at the table, uh, look at the diagram itself. You already tell you uh, what is the displacement already. Okay. Sometimes in exam, uh, we will help you to score some bonus mark. For example, we will ask you to 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 mention uh, the displacement at point one, two, three, four. Meaning, uh, point one, two, three, four. You already can find one and four from diagram. Okay. Um, okay. Then the third part is that we need to find the reaction, the reaction force at point one and four. Reaction means the F, the F, the capital F at one and four. Reaction force, huh? Reaction force capital F. Then after that, 
um, we need to further define or fine tune the small f inside element one, element two, and element three. Then we draw the free body diagram like what we analyzed for spring. Okay, and then what information else we have? We have the length given, E is given, modulus young is given in a mega pascal. Okay, mega pascal. So in test, uh, some of the mistakes that uh, we've seen in the previous test or final exam, uh, some student they forget the mega represent what? Okay, it's a 10 power 6, uh, it kilo, then 10 power 3, and so on. Eh? Uh, okay, then area is in the unit SI meter square. So when you come to test, normally we'll switch this uh, unit into mm or even cm. You need to know how to convert back to uh, unit SI for the area. Um, in this case, the element 1, 2 area is given. Uh, 1, 2 area is 0 0.001. And for uh, element 3, element 3 itself, the E is different. The E is 15 megapascal. And the area is a bit uh, bigger. 0 0.002 mega, uh, uh, meter square for element 3. So you have to know that there's a differences in their properties uh, among uh, element one, two, and three. One and two is the same, but it will be different when it come to element three. Okay, point one. Uh, normally this one, um, this statement you won't be found in the in the test. Uh, this is uh, mentioned because we are discussing a tutorial question. Okay, so in test or exam, uh, all these. Uh, uh, statement you can find in a diagram. Okay. All right. Now, how do we find the student matrix? Right. Now, the first one, how do you score marks is that you write the standard uh, student matrix for element. Okay. Um, this one uh, fixed already. Yeah. So um, for for bar, okay, for bar, not spring. Uh, for bar, you write k equal to a e divided by l. Positive, negative, negative, positive, one inside there. This one give you one mark for your answer. Okay, yeah, very easy to score marks for this module. And also, if you didn't, didn't if of course, if you do not write this one, you will miss one mark. Uh, just let you know. Okay, we will, we will mark your, your answer based on a uh, standard answer. Okay, so if you don't see it, then you we won't give mark to it. Right. Then after that, we substitute the number that given in the question. For example, A is given, E is given, L is given. So we look for element one. Okay, element one. We substitute all the answer there. Important is that you know how to write your K matrix for element one. K superscript one. And remember the shape of the matrix. Eh? So if you accidentally you write like this, then you put K. I won't I won't go and check your answer anymore. I will give you wrong answer for your K because this is not the Stephen matrix uh, symbol or this is not a presentation for Stephen matrix. This is when you do when you look at curly for this module, it can either be a force or displacement. Okay, so if you accidentally you write your K as a curly straight away, you will lose mark for your answer. Okay, I will not proceed further. I will just give you zero for or give you wrong for your K. Okay, so just be careful on the on your answer. All right, so the A is given. A is 0 0.01. E is given. 30 megapascal length remember to switch to meter okay switch to meter because 30 cm equal to 0.3 meter and the middle one is standard positive negative negative positive remember on the unit yeah the unit for k is newton over meter uh, in unit okay so you need to know how to uh, see the unit. Eh? So again, if this is your 
uh, the, the answer for your element one uh, Stephen matrix. This one will give you two marks in full. And if you forget about the unit, if you if you forget to write the unit, then you only score one mark for element one. OK, unit is important in this module. Huh? Unit, huh? all right. Now, uh, by looking at the screen here, what can you write? OK, this question I will go to uh, Sue. Huh? This question will go to you. Um, if I want to write my Stevenson matrix for element two, yes. How should I write? Yeah, uh, if you compare to the element one that you see on the screen. Um, let me see. Uh, for element two, it is same with element one with the A, E, and the L because it already say it's same in the. Okay. Question. Yes, correct. Uh, good answer. So, so you in the in the exam, you can copy or you can straight away you write K two sub and then you write K one like that. If they are same then you you can either write the full matrix or you can just put in uh, this way. Huh? But I will recommend you to write out the full. Okay, I will recommend you to write the full uh, because later when you put in the global matrix, you need to label with a pencil uh, the, the ticket. Huh? Because in matrix, they always have a number for, the, the, each number will mean something. So for example, element one here is connecting point one and point two. So with your pencil, you write one and two, one and two. However, when it comes to element two, although the number same, but if you look at element two, it's connecting point two and point three. Okay. And then uh, for element three will be the same, uh, uh, the same principle. You only need to be careful on the area. The area is different and the uh, modulus elasticity is different area is the same okay um, uh, and then when you combine these three just be remember the matrix number for element three will be a bit different uh, the, 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 although you are looking at one minus one minus one one but if you use your pencil to label them this actually referring to point three this one four this one three four okay so um, just be careful when you write the element later on. Um, if you once you've done mistakes uh, or you forget the steps, then you're not able to find the answer. Okay. Right. So uh, so far at these slides here, any question you want to ask me? Any any one of you? Uh, you don't understand anything on the screen here. Everyone good, huh? Okay. Stop me uh, if you're not able to understand what is happening on the screen. So uh, this this slide here is actually to help you to do the superimpose or we do it superposition where we combine all the uh, Stevenson matrix element like what we did in your uh, homework or in your our previous tutorial for spring. So uh, all of you uh, have uh, shown uh, that you know how to park the number, which is a good sign. Huh? So continue with this kind of skill. So you combine uh, them together. All right. So yeah, I apologize for my laboring. It's a bit uh, uh, wrong. Okay, uh, uh, before we proceed to this one. Huh? So when you combine, okay, when you, before you combine, right? Um, just be careful on the constant in front of the uh, matrix. Before you combine, make sure you factor them out to be the same before you combine them. Okay, you make sure this constant value is the same before you combine them. Okay, like this case. 
this one is the same, 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 and then so that when you put into a global stiffness later on, you can you can straight away combine them together. Okay, yeah. Stop me, yeah. If you not understand what I'm speaking about, just uh, let me know, ah. Okay. What I'm saying is that, for example, if your if your K one, K two, K three is having different area, different length, and so on. So you will get, um, you will get a uh, uh, a different AE over L number in front of the matrix. Okay. And for bar, the matrix will always say positive 1, minus 1, minus 1, positive 1. All this will be the same. Okay, will be the same. So if, um, what I'm, I'm talking here is that if the A, E and L is different for three element, meaning the number in front of this one will be different. So for example, uh, you get three, four, and five, uh, then you need to factor them out or make them the same uh, so that uh, you manage to combine all of them in the global, global matrix later on. Okay, if you have this kind of case, no choice, you have to put them in, times them in, then this one will become plus 3, minus 3, minus 1, uh, sorry, minus 3, positive 3, and so on. Because this one you can, you, you cannot uh, simplify further, okay? So you, then you combine these three matrix, like what we did previously. Okay, what is important is make sure the the constant value in front of the matrix is the same before you combine them, before you plug the number. Okay, all right. I'll give you one tutorial question later on uh, when you go deeper, huh? so you will see. So the rest is just combine all the number. So this one is one, this one is two, this one is three, this one is four, same with this one, one, two, three, four. Okay, so again, when you label one, two, one, two, two, three, two, three, uh, three, four, three, four, then you park the number according to the, <coughs> the parking ticket. For example, this one is one, one, you park one, one here. Now, why this one is 0 0.1 is because we we times the 0 0.1 inside there. And our constant value, we get a full number, which is uh, 10 power 6. Of course, it would, if you, if okay, there are, there are many ways you write. Yeah? You can write 10 power 5, and then this one become 1. It will be the same as what uh, we see here. Okay, So this is just an example. I'm using 10 power 6. So if you can... If you use other method, uh, other numbers also same, as long as the magnitude is the same, okay? Because uh, point 0.1 times 10 power 6 is the same for 1 times 10 power 5, and so on, okay? All right. Now, this area, I don't have already because most of you are able to understand how you how you park the number here, okay? Um, only reminder for uh, all of you is that when you combine a number, make sure you check this diagonal number. Make sure that all this diagonal number is positive. If you found any negative number here, it means that uh, you parked the wrong number already. So for this module, one of the indication where you did it correctly or not, you check the diagonal number, it must be positive. Okay, it must be positive. And then we are having a square, uh, square matrix where you can see that this number is same as this number. You can do a mirror. mirror huh? So this one will be the same like this one. This will be same like this one. 
minus one, minus one, same. This one will be same like this one. So zero was same as zero. Minus one was same as minus one. And this one only happen when you have a same, uh, same uh, property inside there. Okay, you have the same property, for example, one and two. But however, when you combine a number, normally, normally, uh, uh, normally you have a uh, uh, this behavior in the matrix. So uh, what is what is important is that the diagonal number must be positive. Okay, must be positive. Okay. All right. After that, we solve for unknown. Once we have a global matrix up to here, remember uh, the marking or the notation you use. Capital means global stiffness matrix. Small k means element stiffness matrix. You have to understand the meaning, uh, the meaning uh, global and element. Uh. So the, 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 the question asks you to solve for global. Next, we look for displacement for point two and three. What will happen here if there is external force? So the next one is call out the F equal to KD. You just write F equal KD, capital F, capital K with the correct uh, symbol, curly, square, curly. So for F, you know that you have four point there. One, two, three, four. So you have F1X, F2X, F3X, F4X. Why? Why we only have x, don't have y, because we already mentioned about the assumption when we solve for bar, we don't have y element, we don't have y forces, and don't have moment uh, for bar. So we are only looking at xo direction, where it is in this case in x direction. So we have f1x, f2x, f3x, f4x. Remember, we are looking at global forces. Why we use global forces? because the K that you import here is a capital K. Right? If you use small K, then this one becomes small f. So we are looking at capital K which is global. Then you just import what we did in uh, section A just now. And then for D displacement, same, because we are having a four point here. So, uh, and, and our reference axis is X direction. So we are having uh, U1, U2, U3, and U4. Okay, any questions so far? Any questions so far for this one? No, sir. All right. Okay. Um, Sue, so okay, yeah? Uh, Sue, so, uh, Asmal, and uh, Tia, okay, yeah, so far? Okay, sir. All right. Very good. So, uh, to solve this question, because we know that uh, we only we know that u1 is zero, u4 zero, because no displacement. So uh, just give you some hints how to score marks is that you write u1 equals zero, u2 uh, u4 zero. You automatic get yourself two marks here. Automatic get two marks here. So since this two is uh, giving us a zero, so what we did is that we will, we will close one and four. So this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So since one and four is zero, we will use our ruler, just draw a pencil line, close one, close four. So you only look at the middle one. You look at F2X, F3. Uh, remember when you import, uh, there's a constant value outside the matrix here. So uh, this also one of the area where students forget to import into the answer. They will so focus and then they will copy in the answer. Then you look at this area and then this area. So you arrive at Okay, again, uh, if you write your all the boundary condition, boundary condition means you any constraint on the structure. 
So you write U1 0, U4 0, or you write U1 equal to U4 equal 0, you will get two marks here. Okay. Um, there is an uh, external force. In this case, F2X is 3000, which is here. Okay, then you can substitute inside the matrix there. F3X. Okay, so in this case, you should know automatic. Uh, F3X, although we didn't mention in the question statement, um, you should know that F3X, there's no force there. Okay, there's no force and it's linked with all the members together uh, and it's free to move along X axis. Okay, like what we, what we uh, did in the spring, when you have a connecting point that connect members together and there's no wall beside them, means that there's no wall in, in point three and point three is free to move along X axis, then F3X will be zero. Important, huh? you understand this one. Okay, important, you understand this one, yeah? This one, if you don't understand, you might having trouble solving the unknown. Okay, so important, huh? take note. So for bounding condition, the question will, uh, will guide you, will, will guide you to solve the question. Uh, we will ask you to mention bounding condition in your answer, meaning you we will expect you to write, for example, in this tutorial question, I will expect you to write uh, u1 equal u4 equal 0, f2x equal a uh, capital F, uh, f2x equal 3000, f3x equal 0. Or oh, sometime we will help you. Um, um, what uh, we ask you one, one particular section where we give you a free marks. What is the forces at point number three? Uh, the answer is zero. Okay. Then after that, you only looking at the point two and point three. So you only having, uh, you can write F equal to KD but only looking at the interest point, eh? at the point two and point three only. So you look at, uh, you can reduce the, the function to 3000, zero. And then uh, your K, uh, this is two and three. Eh? So you're having a 0 0.2 uh, minus one, minus one point two, U3. So here we'll give you one equation. This one gives you another equation. Okay. So you have two equation here. You have two unknown. You can manage to find U3 and U, uh, U2 and U3. Just solving simultaneous equation. Okay. Yeah. Or you can do the matrix method. Matrix method, how you do it is that you pull the matrix here, you become inverse matrix times the force, then you can get the answer. U2, U3. Okay, there are two ways. Huh? Either you use simultaneous equation or you use the matrix uh, inverse method. You pull the, the matrix to the left hand side, it become inverse matrix times the force, you get the U3 and U2. Both give you same answer. So solving for, I would recommend for a simultaneous equation because it's more familiar to all of you, all right? So you get U2 and U3, all right? I won't give you the answer. It's just that um, I teach you how to how to do it, all right? The, the method, huh? try to do the method because the number will change in test or in your work later on, okay? Yeah, so here you can find your U2 and U3. Then after that, once you found the U2 and U3, you put back into the uh, F equal to KD equation. So you know the answer for F3, you know the answer for F2, you know U1, you know U4, 0, uh, and previously uh, you already found the U2 and U3. So basically you just left out what is F1 and F4. Again, you are seeing four equation here. So basically, you just left out these two equation. 
So how to find F1X, F4X, you just read from, again, uh, there's a constant value outside this one. Remember to include this number in your equation. Uh. So for F1X, you take this row, time this column, you get the first equation for F1X. Okay, so 10, 10 power 6 times the whole equation, meaning a 0 0.1, times u1 plus negative u2, a negative 0.1 u2 plus 0 times u3 plus 0.u4. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I forget to mention why there's a zero here. Okay, earlier. So when you import the the matrix uh, just now, uh, so for element one, for example, element one, you have point two and point, point one and point two only. So when you import the number for element one, if there is no number for this place, you just put zero. Okay, after you import all the numbers, uh, after you import all the numbers, and if you still have seeing blank there, and for example, one and one, two, three, four, so this place is one and three. So inside the, the element matrix here, there's no one three here. So there's no parking ticket that refer to one three. So you just put zero. Same with this one. 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 Okay. All right. Then you solve for F1, X, F2, X. Okay. So uh, just to check, whether you get the correct or not, you can go and check for F2x. If you times the equation also, all right, if you time the equation also, you arrive at 3000. Okay, you agree with the statement here. Then F3x, if you do the equation also for F3x, you will get zero. Just to check. Huh? So for example, you found for what is the equation for F2x, you time this column. Oh, sorry, this row times this column, you, you, the, the products of the multiplication will get 3,000. If you don't get 3,000, means something wrong in your matrix or in your displacement just now. Okay. Uh, so this is how you check whether you get the correct answer or not. F3x, you multiply, you will also get 0. Okay, F3x. This one times the row times the column. Make sure the answer is zero because this point is free to move and there's no constraint. There's no wall around them. There's no roller ball or anything around the point. So the force will be zero. Then after that, you found the fourth equation. It will be something, right? After you substitute the answer for it. So this is how we solve for this kind of uh, bar question by using uh, matrix method. Okay, so far everyone good? Mm, okay, sir. Okay, uh, anyone you don't understand what is happening? Why why all these numbers is come on the screen? Stop me uh, if you're not able to understand why suddenly we arrive at all these numbers. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we, we, we continue a little bit, then we can stop for the day. Yeah? So if no question, we will continue with um, uh, the step number two just now is to how we find the function, right? How we find the displacement function. Um, it will be uh, available on the screen here. So if you're having a, a bar structure like that, okay, so you just label uh, the point and the length. So this one is you're having a, a, a bar, and then um, you go for second steps where you will uh, draw the uh, function U shape 
So for example, point one will move, right? For example, point one will move. So there's a U1 there. Then point two will also move. So from point one to point two, there will be a changes of displacement uh, in this kind of form. Okay. So this is the first scenario. It can be either happen in the this scenario, B, where uh, the movement of U1 until U2 will given you by this equation, U equal to A1 plus A2X, where your displacement will change as you move across the uh, length of uh, X. Okay. The second one is that we're going to build the constant value of N1, we call it a uh, factor number. Or shape factor, a uh, shape number, a uh, shape function. Okay, n1 is a shape function here. n1 is your shape function, n1. So in this case, n1 will be equal to 1 minus x divided by l. So you learn about n1 in your uh, dynamic class where you study about the um, moment on the structure. Okay. So in this case, you just recall that we having a n1 function or shape function given on the bar will give us will give you n1 equal to one minus x divided by l. Okay, uh, so it will be the same for n2. N1 is for uh, point number one, the shape from point one. N2 will be looking at uh, the shape function uh, for point number two. Okay, so um, these are the general understanding when we try to find or use the correct uh, displacement function when we do the analysis. Okay, now the first is that we look at the element. Try to understand what is happening to the element. In this case, the force is acting along the body of the bar. So the first uh, displacement function of u will give you a1 plus a2x. Why we can use this equation? It is because we are having an elastic behavior, elastic behavior where we mentioned in the previous class. Okay, elastic behavior where the the bar will behave linearly. So meaning when you pull at one point, it will behave linearly. So you, you can use the a1 plus a2x uh, equation to define the displacement uh, uh, behavior on the bar itself. Then after that, the shape function. Shape function is a uh, equation to define the, the movement of the, uh, uh, the, the, the point the, the, at the point, how it will behave, okay? How it will behave. So for example, n1, Point one will give you n one equal to one minus x divided by l. Okay, so if you focus on point one and you move point one, then there is a number for the shape given by this equation. Same with point number two, n two will give you only x divided by l. All right. So I will go a little bit deeper. So first one, we choose mathematic model that represent the bar. Um, we will, uh, since we already come to your uh, year three, so we will use a more accurate equation rather than linear equation. Again, we have a, a linear equation, we have quadratic equation. Then to be more accurate estimating the behavior of the structure, we will use polynomial equation. Okay. Then after that, you study the displacement, u1 and u2. And this is the equation that I explained just now. So we will use u1 equal to a1 plus a2x for the bar. Okay. Um, a1 and a2, they are coefficient. Okay. And they are equal to degree of freedom. Now, what I mean by degree of freedom? For example, this bar, 
you have two point. Two point means you have two degree of freedom, means point one can move, point two can move. So you have two point, means you have two degree of freedom. So each one will give you one coefficient. If you have three, then you have another three. So you have a three degree of freedom, you have a three point, huh? then you can add this uh, equation to a3 x power 2 and so on because we are looking at polynomial equation if you have four point then more la. you have a4 x power 3 and so on you have more and more free uh, point on the structure then you have you have a longer equation in this case we look at two points so you only have uh, a1 and a2x. Okay. Okay. Then after that, you put them in the matrix form again. This is a displacement, linear displacement uh, equation. You try to put in the matrix form. So uh, try to understand what is happening on the screen here. Metric form u equal to 1x times the uh, uh, the coefficient. Huh? So we're having 1x a1 a2. It mean if you expand this equation, you take 1 times a1 plus x a2. You get the same equation as above. Only that you need to put this equation into the matrix form. Yeah, so far everyone good lah? on what is happening on the screen. We are we are using a linear displacement uh, equation and we change it to matrix form. Right there. Okay. And after that, so this is the equation that we see so far. This is a matrix uh, form for this equation. After that, we apply boundary condition at the node at the point there. So what are the boundary condition? For example, this is x equals zero at the left hand side. So when you substitute your x equal to zero, so meaning you you have you can write a function u uh, zero equal you substitute zero uh, zero in this equation x zero cancel you only get uh, a one okay then you do for the same okay uh, just to test uh, Ashma what happened at point number two what is the number that we need to substitute if you look at point two, what is the number if you compare to the left hand side equation? If you look at point two, if you look at point two, one on the diagram, do you see one there? What is the uh, alphabet that you should use? At cool. point two, okay. Why we substitute zero at for the point one. You understand why? Why do we substitute zero at point one? Uh, you understand? Huh? Why why here is zero? What is happening to the x? X is zero, right? What is x? Oh. Why x value is zero at point one? What is the length of your x? Zero. Ah, okay. Now back to the question I asked you. At point two, what is the value of your x? By looking at this diagram. Two. Two is the point number. It should be. Uh, I I think it should be one. Where if you write one, it means one to two is one. Do you see one in the diagram? Here I only see point one is one, point two is two. This is only numbering, huh? 
it's not the 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 length of the point or differences between the point. Is it L? Yes, the correct answer is at point two, your x value is L. Oh. It's not two. Two is only the numbering. Okay, so L. What is the answer? What is the equation you have after you substitute L? What is the equation that you should get? Uh, A2 time L. A2 time L. What happened to A1? Uh, A1 plus A2 time L. Okay. For point 0.2, you are equal to A1 plus A2 L. Okay. Can I, uh, Asma, you understand? Uh? Stop me, uh. any of you, you don't understand what is happening on the screen here. Why this one is zero? Why this one is L? Why this one, the equation of this one, why become only you having a A1? And this one missing. It's because you substitute your X value as zero here. So this one, and you look at point number two here, the X length, the X position is L. Because if you give you are already given the the L represent the differences, the distance between point one and point two. So you you substitute the L inside the function here. So U L, you substitute the L here, you'll get this one. A1 plus A two L. Yeah, stop me eh, if you're not able to understand these two equations so far. Why this one become A1, this one become A1 plus A2L. We are referring to this diagram. Stop me eh, if you're not able to process this information. Okay, we continue. Eh? In meaning that, you can you can continue the equation number two there because our u1 equal to a1 you substitute inside here you will get u2 the relationship between your u2 and u1 and the l you can link them together so your u2 equal to u1 plus a2l then after that you can find what is the value of your a2 because the objective here is to find the core efficient of your A1 and A2. We need to find what is our A1, what is our A2. Because previously we don't know, but we can link A1 and A2 with U1 and U2 and the L. We link these three parameters together to eliminate the A1 and A2. Yeah. Then you can write the equation on the left. You will arrive at in the form where we no longer see A1 and A2, but you will link your displacement U with u1 plus u2 minus u1 divided by l times x. Okay, by transforming this equation into this one, because we already find our a1, a2. So a1 is u1, a2 is u2 minus u1 divided by l by the derivation of the equation on the screen here. Okay, now once you get this equation, you apply the bounding condition that we have. So we put them in the matrix form. Okay, so this one is what we derived so far. U equal to U1 plus U2 minus U1 divided by L times X. So you expand them to the second equation here. U1 minus X divided by L, this one. And x 
Uh, so this is U2, I see. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, this one is U2. Uh, so you arrange them, this one, negative, U1. Okay. Uh, we need to try to put U1 and U1 together. Okay. Then you get this one, U2. All right. So try to understand uh, why certainly this one become negative. Why this one positive? It is from the previous equation. We just expand them, rearrange them to put U1 and U1 together. Then you can put them in the matrix form. Transform in matrix form. So we can write 1 minus XL times U1 plus X divided by L U2. This one plus this one plus this one plus this one. You get this equation. Okay, this equation you can write 1 minus X divided by L times u1. That's why you can get 1 minus x divided by l. Okay, we have this one already. Eh? Stop me eh? if you're not able to see the relationship between the equation on the screen. Or the equation on the screen doesn't look logic to you. Tell me. Eh? I can explain one more time. Okay, so to simplify the uh, equation in the matrix, we will substitute or we can rewrite 1 minus x divided by L equal to N1. Why? Because this one refers to point 0.1. This is uh, point 0.1, uh, N1. Then this one we can write as N2. So in this case, we already define what is the coefficient number a1 and a2 on these slides we define what is your shape function n2 and n1 yeah from this matrix n1 equal to 1 minus x divided by l n2 equal to x divided by l and you represent them in the in the shape form you can see in the c represent what is your n1 d is what represent by n2 Okay, so again, uh, I, you learned something new today, is that N1, N2 is the shape or interpolation function uh, depend on the node itself. Yeah, so today you learn new things today. You learn about what is A. A is core coefficient. Okay, dealing with degree of freedom. And you learn about N1, N2, which is called as shape function or interpolation function. Okay, it derived from this equation. Okay, uh, derived from this one. U equal to A1 plus A2x. Then we substitute, link them, what is your U1, U2, and L, and we continue with the steps. Okay. So, um, so far we can get what is our U1 and what is our U2. We call approximate function. So, just now we derive what is our equation already. Your U, your U equal to U1 minus uh, x divided by L U1 plus x divided by L minus U, uh, x divided by L U2. We have, we have a, a equation here and we have a function here. So if you continue processing, um, you can continue to estimate what is happening. So for example, you are looking at two points here. This two points give you the previous equation just now u equal to u2 minus u1 l x plus u1 just now okay then you can use this number to continue to estimate what is happening to u3 by using the displacement equation or displacement function 
Okay, I'll repeat one more time before we end our lecture today. You have equation just now with this, this one. Put in matrix form will be this one. The shape function. So if you look at this equation, u equal to u1 plus u2 minus u1 l x this one it represent this one so only two points so you put this equation you calculate okay so this is the equation that you're looking at this equation only looking for this section only and looking for element one from point one to point two element one Point 0.1 and point 0.2. If you analyze for element 2, you can use the same equation. However, when you write element 2, u superscript 2, u3 minus u2 L, because you are connecting point 0.2 and point 0.3, so you take u3 minus u2 L, x plus u2 for second element. And you have another element you should able to derive with the same method if the question asks you to derive for the third one. The third one will be u3 equal to u, let's say this is 0.4, you have u4 minus u3 divided by Lx plus u, u3. Okay, you should know uh, if the question asks you to derive for the next one. So this equation is important uh, when you use simulation software later on uh, or ANSYS. So you, once you understand this shape function uh, and how they come into the value later on, uh, it's important uh, uh, you understand this one into this equation. Okay. When you when you have one, are you able to find the displacement at point one and point two? The answer can be carried forward to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, where the computer is going to generate the result for you. Okay. Um, so in this case, we assume there's no opening and no no jumps in the structure. Okay, no opening means it's a continuous, uh, means the structure is continuous and you break them into, for example, this one is break into three points. Uh, two element, three points. Okay. Okay, number three, step number three here, you can read. Okay, you can read. Um, it's just that we assume that um, uh, we're having a continuity in our system. There's no uh, uh, broken point inside our calculation. Um, yeah. Step number four will be just uh, further define if we look at the number of A1 and A2, what does it mean? So when you have a rigid body, then uh, you can look at A1, what does it mean? All right, A1 will represent a rigid body motion. A2x will uh, tell you what is the strain value. It's the strain value. Okay, so this A2 give you by du over dx. A2 will be uh, your strain because strain, the, uh, strain defined as du over dx. So A2, the number A2 itself, the coefficient here is actually tell you the strain value. Okay. And you can read uh, all from the screen here. Uh, the completeness of all this one. So convergence is the word that we look for uh, when you use a simulation or you are doing analysis. Convergence means the displacement, the, the agreement between uh, 
your this line is exact solution. So this is what you calculate. So the distance becomes smaller and smaller is better when you do calculation. So as the distance between smaller and smaller compared to the convergence, uh, compared to the exact solution, we call it convergence. So you can see that the point is actually become nearer and nearer, and then it will become one straight line in a simulation. So convergence is a, another uh, parameter that we see, that we say that you already reach uh, a stage where it's, it's very near to the uh, actual uh, real number. Okay, so convergence. Okay, we stop here.